Hi guys, welcome. My name's Tom. In this video, we're going to be looking at a few different ways in watercolour that we can kind of move the viewer's eye around the painting, draw attention to one area and kind of push attention away from another area and just create slightly more interesting painting as a result. Let's have a look. So we're going to be painting a pair of puffins, but really in some ways the subject itself doesn't particularly matter. Uh, it would apply to any subject and also picking any sort of focal point. The fairly obvious focal point here for me is the heads of the puffins. We tend to look at the eyes and the heads of most things first. That generally is the bit we get drawn to and generally is the focal point. It doesn't have to. There will be plenty of other paintings where you can play around with not making that the focal point. And in particular, we may say that the puffin in the foreground um, is potentially the one we want to look at first. And then we kind of move beyond that to a second focal point, which is the head of the second puffin behind. So at the moment, I'm just kind of blocking things in with fairly light paint. Although it looks fairly dark, there's room to go much darker. I'm trying to keep my tones very, very soft. And as you'll see, I try to keep them especially soft on the puffin further back. Um, this is partly because I, 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 for the very reason that I want that puffin to be um, kind of pushed back behind the other one. So we're gonna do things like simplifying the tonal values of the background puffin. We're gonna have more soft edges. We're gonna have it slightly less described. Uh, and then the puffin in the foreground, we're gonna have more variety of tone more illusion of detail we're probably going to have some or a higher proportion of deep rich darks uh, and we'll see what else we can do the other things that we need to think about are what we're going to do with the background and how are we going to create a background that supports the focal point or the main event which is the heads of the puffins but it doesn't kind of conflict with it. This is what I mean by trying to move the viewer's eye around the painting. We kind of want the viewer's eye to go to the focal point, but then take a little journey around the rest of the painting, but we don't want the rest of the painting to detract or distract from the head. So there are so many different ways we can do this. Um, we're gonna have really vibrant bright reds in the face. That's instantly gonna draw our attention there. We're gonna have lovely kind of hot oranges and cool pinks in other places, very high chroma, strong colours. But it's really that very, very punchy, intense, warm red in the faces that will draw attention. The areas of the background, like the flowers and sort of giving the merest hint of some rocks, I'm painting much more loosely. Uh, I'm not going into any detail whatsoever, very swift, quick brush strokes and a lot of wet into wet work so that all the colours kind of flow together. And as a result, we get a lot of very soft and lost edges. So these soft and lost edges will always attract less attention than sharper, harder edges. We may get edges um, soft simply by the way that we physically use the medium, i.e. wet into wet or damp into damp, but we can also push tonal values closer together. So we can push um, like a, the, the dark of the puffin or the, the, the darker mid-tone close in value to the kind of dark green behind it. So although there might be a sharp line there, the fact that the tonal values are very close together will um, draw less attention than say somewhere like the face where we're gonna have some very deep rich darks with some very sharp hard edges against some very, very sharp bright lights of the face. So that's gonna create a high contrast in both light and shadow as well as kind of sharp edges and that will draw more attention, especially along with the, the warmth on the beaks and everything else that we've already spoken about. So our first layer is dry and I'm going in and now really, really strengthening these darks. I am effectively working in the focal point at the moment. So I'm taking a little bit more care in here. I'm making my shapes a little bit more specific. I'm being sure to get some very, very deep, rich darks. It's not to say that there won't be any soft edges whatsoever. For example, we've, I've got some nice kind of soft edges on the shadow or the white in shadow of the head uh, going into the dark feathers because that's a kind of shadow area and I'm looking to create slightly softer feeling in the shadows. Now, one of the things that I do in this background puffin, as I said, I want this background puffin to sit back a little bit more. And at the moment, it kind of is because the darker tones 
in the puffin are slightly lighter and I could have very very easily have left the head of the left hand puffin where it is and actually if I'm completely honest I go in and darken it later and looking back on it part of me wishes that I hadn't because it would have been more in alignment with what I was trying to achieve which is that the foreground puffin darker, sharper, more defined, colour more intense, shadows deeper and then what I kind of do is the head of the background puffin I almost bring it up to the same level uh, of finish as the, the foreground puffin and I could have left them uh, further apart in level of finish and it, it may have enhanced the painting more, I don't know. It's just something worth thinking about. So as I focus in on the head now, hopefully you can see that the level of attention, the sizes of the shapes, the level of refinement and the level of detail that I'm trying to achieve in the heads is significantly different from the rest of the painting. If we take, say, the bottom right-hand corner, big bold brush strokes, letting all the colours flow together. Yes, there is contrast of tone, but a lot of the tones kind of flow together more. And there's not any area where I've really homed in and created any detail um, like I have in the face of the puffins. And equally, the far left-hand side behind the most distant puffin, again, is incredibly abstract. When you really break it down it's and blur your eyes, it's really just a few basic shapes like there's a basic abstract shape of green there's something that kind of suggests light hitting rocks and there's a few splashes of pink nothing there is is that literal it's a little bit more abstracted it's certainly much simpler uh, and there's a lot more flowing of the paint and kind of soft edges and the more the painting develops the more you will see the level of sharpness that i am bringing into the face the the areas away from the face I'm creating very very soft and then there are places that are kind of in between the two uh, and this is where things can get a little bit trickier so the chest of the background puffin is just a little bit sharper there's a little bit more detail on the back of the puffin but away from the focal point in the foreground and then very finally to really bring attention to those heads I'm using a completely different colour that doesn't exist anywhere else in the painting and it's really deep rich turquoise and it's serving to trap lights on the heads of the puffins create some very very hard sharp lines of light and also contrast that lovely red and really make that focal point pop. So there we go guys I hope you got something out of that one I had a huge amount of fun painting that I tried to keep it very simple very fresh and really focus on these kind of different focal areas and how we can move the viewer's eye around. There's going to be loads more videos to come so please do consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications and you can find a much longer narrated version of this painting over on my Patreon teaching channel along with tons of other content and lots more content being released regularly. You will also see links to all the other places that you can find me online, the various different platforms. Until next time guys, happy living, Happy painting and I will see you soon.